Today I'm going to be talking about what is possibly the least sexy subject I've ever covered here on the channel. Maintaining and getting your gear ready for use. Hey there, and welcome to Large Format Friday. I'm your host Matt Mirage. If this is the first time you're stopping by the channel, there's a playlist of the fourth season that we're currently working on. And if you haven't subscribed yet, each and every Friday we're going to be here and we're going to be chatting about something large format photography. So I've got a trip coming up here pretty soon and I wanted to prep my gear because, well, if you've seen how I handle things on the channel, I use and abuse it and I kind of knock it around. I'm not afraid to get out there and get the gear a little bit dirty. But with that comes, well, one of two options. I either have to learn how to maintain my gear or I have to replace it relatively often. I don't have the kind of money to be replacing my gear that much, so take a stab at servicing it. I'm gonna start with one of the most important pieces of gear and that's your grip. I'm gonna work on my tripod and tripod head here. I'm gonna take some bits of this apart. Don't worry, there's nothing electronic about it. If I can take this stuff apart, you can too. So this is my Enduro CT414. It's, a, it's an older model carbon fiber tripod. I'm gonna tighten up some things, take it apart, clean it. And I'm also gonna tighten up some bits on my tripod. Once I've got that settled, I'm gonna go into some of the little maintenance bits on my 8x10 camera here to get it ready for, uh, for next week's trip. So some places where your tripod is inevitably gonna start giving way or getting dirty or just otherwise not performing are all of the joints. Anywhere you have a joint, kind of like your elbow or your knees, those are fail points and things we need to maintain. This flexible joint here has these bits that come out. I've got one leg that has a completely loose bit, so I have to take off the leg. Once I do that, I'm also gonna start cleaning some of these movable legs as well as the shims inside there so it, you know, actually opens and closes when I want it to. I'm also gonna tighten up some bits so the legs don't completely flop around. Oh, before I do that, I'm gonna take the head off here. Uh, this tripod has what's called a spider base here. A lot of tripods will. So I can unlock this and pull out the column. This allows me to change across multiple columns um, and I'm gonna remove this and make sure everything's tight there too. So once I have the column and the tripod head removed from the spider base of my tripod, I'm also just gonna remove uh, the top part of the Majestic head. This bottom piece just comes out and there's a nice little adapter. Uh, Majestic tripods were meant to thread onto this one and a half inch diameter post. So if you wanna use one of these on a standard tripod, you'll need this machined aluminum piece. Mine fortunately came with one, uh, but there are some folks that manufacture these and sell these on like eBay and Etsy, but it's three eighths to inch and a half post. We'll set that aside. Most tripod columns are going to have one or two or three of these Allen key set screws. The purpose of these three posts is to butt against whatever tripod head you have screwed into, so you only have to do it finger tight. We don't need to crank this over and over to make things happen. So just finger tight, and then once that's on there, get our little toolkit out that came with our tripod, and this is gonna have a wrench for the center column and some hex keys for adjusting stuff. I'm gonna start with this smaller hex key and I can use those to tighten up the head. Good, and last one. Okay, so that part's all tightened. I can set that aside. All right, next part. On a geared head like this, um, I'm not gonna crack this open because there is some inner springs in this giant wrought iron chamber. I don't wanna mess with that too much. But what I am gonna do is I'm gonna take my little Phillips head screwdriver and make sure that all the joints that are supposed to stay in place are. So just check and see that these are all up <laughs> and we already have some loose ones. This happens, it's a geared head. It's meant to rotate like this. So over the course of time, and cranking stuff and I have dropped this head a few times. Stuff's gonna get loose. Just give it a little tighten. Now this one I don't want to tighten too much because you can see that actually changes the direction. On the back here, give this, oh wow that was really loose. Oh both of these were really loose. Okay, still moves fluidly. There we go. All right, let's hit the sides. Nice. Good. Ooh, there we go. Found another one. You have to find a flat head for that. Oh, and hit the bottom here. Yeah, cool. So we're all tightened. Let's assemble that. And this isn't some sort of fluid, like magical fluid chamber. You can see it's ground over the years. I'm just gonna insert it until it stops. Nice and tight. Okay, now that's all set. Let's move on to the main tripod legs. There's a 
tiny little screw underneath here that needs tightened and that's what's causing that to not stay up when I push it. So I'm gonna need to remove the leg. I'm gonna use the larger Allen key that this came with to do that. I'm just gonna keep loosening this. Okay, there's one side and let's get the other. There we go. We're out and just like that. With the leg removed, you can see the culprit here. It's just a little Phillips head screw that has gotten way, way, way too loose over the years. I'm just gonna tighten that down. So with this part tightened, let's also talk about cleaning the segments of the legs themselves. So each of these leg segments have on them this little twist knob. And if I keep pulling it out, there's gonna be a pair of plastic shims. These little white plastic shims are what catch the leg at the very back of this. And they just seat on there with this, uh, this little square shape that matches the square shape here. And you can see my fingers are already just completely dusty and dirty. And there's even a good amount of sand uh, that has gotten lodged in here over the years. Hocking Hills, there's lots of sand. Easiest way to clean this off is a microfiber cloth and some warm water. You can also spritz it off with canned air if you don't want to wait for it to dry. After hitting those threads just a few times, there's tons and tons of dirt and sand that got dislodged. So that was worth the clean. In addition, we have these shims, which are also super dirty. These could use a soak in some warm water. Once they're done soaking, we can just buff them off a little bit with our microfiber cloth. The last thing I can concentrate on is making sure that this carbon fiber leg slides smoothly. So hit it with the damp cloth. Once I've gotten most of the dirt and debris off of the column, I want to make sure this glides as smooth as possible. I can do this with some silicone spray lubricant. A very little goes a long way. I bought this can six or seven years ago around the first time I cleaned this tripod and uh, yeah, it's, it's almost full. Just a tiny little spritz is all we'll need. That's it. And then wipe it on the leg. One of the trickiest parts of cleaning a twist lock tripod like this is each one of these twist locks has on the inside of it an additional shim. And this sits at the very, very bottom. There's some uh, threads where it tightens up and then there's a channel where this little piece falls into. And you can see it's even been carved over the years from being pushed too far up or down in. So this is another place where you wanna hit it with that damp cloth make sure you get those threads nice and clean. And in this case, I'll actually do the spray lubricant directly onto those threads and then give it a little buff. And this is gonna make sure everything slides right into place and then the tension will keep everything nice and tight. So I've got my column. I'm gonna add this piece back in. It's gonna face this direction because it's gonna sit on the inside right in there. It's not gonna let me push it in that way, so I have to push it in from the top, and then I have to kind of pinch it with my finger and push it all the way down. I hear that nice click, it's in place. Thread it down. There we go. Reattach my shims. So these little plastic pieces, don't lose these guys. These are worth their weight in gold, all right? Attach those, and then reinsert it up the row. And if I do it right, I should be able to go all the way up and get a nice twist. And if I did it right, these should flush right up against each other. One, two, three, no extra gaps. And you can almost hear the air hiss out of the column below it. And that is a nice clean leg. Okay, let's go ahead and reattach our clean legs. So I'm just gonna butt it up against that opening. Make sure we're even right there. And start threading it in. And I'm just getting it finger tight for now. Once both sides are secure, then I can open it up and tighten it a little bit harder towards the ground. Without tightening this the full way, gravity will start to take over and push this leg down a little bit. I don't want it to fall any. I want it to stay tight until I move it. So I'm just gonna use this Allen key. It helps if you have two of them, but we can cinch one side and then cinch the other. And there we go, it's a nice, action. I need some pressure to move it, but not like all the pressure in the world. And this is a good time to check my other legs. Oh, that one's nice and tight. How's this one? That one's good. And the last one. Oh, that one needed it. Okay, cool. All right. 
While we're cleaning, we can also take a look at our spider base here. And this will reveal another set of threads and plastic shim to be cleaned. Oh yeah, the inside of this is absolutely nasty. It's a ton, a ton of sand. Okay, it's pretty good. A little spritz. Okay, start to tighten this down a little bit. I don't want it too tight though because I still have to insert my column into here. Good. Position it to where I like it, hold on to a reference point, and then tighten down the spider base. There we go. With the tripod clean to the point where I trust it again, I'm gonna pop the camera on. There we go, lock her down. And now we can start dusting off the camera. Another good time to check all of my knobs, make sure everything is, ooh, okay, that was not nice and tight. Those look pretty good. Check all these little bits on the rail here. Good. The more you rack this rack and pinion, the more you're gonna to need to make sure this is nice and tight. This is a wood bed. Wood is going to bulge and flex depending on how wet or dry it is out. So check all of my knobs, make sure everything looks nice and clean there. Tighten this guy. It always seems like this rear tilt is the one that goes first on, uh, on this particular camera. Good. And now I'm gonna to touch up the bellows. To do that, I'm gonna make sure I'm racked all the way out. Hey, she's not squeaking as much. That's a good sign. Speak of the devil. <laughs> With the bellows all the way drawn out, I'm gonna start dusting a little bit. If it's been a while since you've done a check on your camera, this would also be a good time to take your camera into a darkened space and shine a flashlight through to make sure you don't have any pinholes in your bellows. Just dusting a little bit. Oh, that bed is dirty. Oh my goodness. Got leaves and dust and sand. Dust is the enemy of our large format photography and some of this dust is all my fault. You know, if the outside of your camera was pretty bad and dusty, chances are the inside of the camera is not gonna fare too much better. Let's take a look. Pop that ground glass off. I'm gonna tilt this back. So let gravity do its job. All right. There's some leaf litter. There's some leaf litter. There's some leaf litter. So off camera, I ran out of air, so I had to switch to uh, my compressor. Now, when you're using like a real, real air compressor, you really gotta be careful. You don't need too much PSI to do this. The lowest PSI setting on there is generally gonna be fine. So I'm gonna give this a little spritz. Oh yeah, nice and dusty. The corner of these frames is the worst. And it's also a good time if you wanna clean your ground glass, all you need to do is pop off the screws for the springs and then rinse this in just warm water and a little bit of soap. No scrubbing necessary, just a gentle buff with a sponge or a microfiber cloth and then let it air dry. Don't try to use any sort of cleaning materials. Water and soap is gonna be fine. And if you're wondering how could so much crap possibly get trapped inside the bellows here, well, it's for the same reason that this camera folds up nice and compact. When I bring this down and push it back using the tilt, you see how the front of the bellows jumps into the bed. So if I don't keep this bottom part of the bed cleaned, I'm gonna get leaf litter, dust, sometimes even insects living inside the bellows. Now for the final part of planning for this trip, packing this case. So this is my Pelican 1630. This was originally purchased for my CNRP2, but I'm gonna use this to ship my gear ahead of time. So I've got my Pelican case in the bottom of that, changing bag, low pro backpack. Inside the backpack, we're gonna add our camera body, our dark cloth, 
wide lens, wide standard lens, standard lens, filter holder, filters, black and white filters, magnifying loop, Reveni Labs meter, cable releases, notes, polarizing filter for the wide angle, tools for the tripod, cleaning pads. Once the bag's all secured, get the tripod, push that all the way down. Got our itty bitty video tripod, get the tripod head, put them in there, get some film, film holders. Uh, well, Thanks for joining me today. If you have any questions about uh, maintaining some of the easy stuff like the camera body, uh, tripod, any other grip gear, uh, be sure to drop those down below in the comments. I didn't tackle any of the lens stuff today because lenses are far more sensitive precision devices that I am just not comfortable yet. So now I'll leave that one specifically to the experts. And if you have any of those long form questions, you can always feel free to shoot me an email, largeformatquestions at gmail.com. Thanks again for stopping by and we'll catch you next week for more LFF.